Hi, this is Mr. Nazarian, and today we are going to look at uh, multiplying mixed numbers. And we've worked quite a bit with multiplying fractions and fractions and fractions with whole numbers, and uh, today we're going to be focusing on multiplying mixed numbers, which again is a whole number and a fraction together, uh, and taking that and multiplying it with another mixed number. So we're going to look at this one, uh, 3 and 1 fourths times 2 and 1 and 2 thirds. Um, and I, I want to, we're going to take a, an approach today as a strategy that you're all very familiar with and apply it to uh, multiplying mixed numbers with mixed numbers. So if we look at a problem like this, 15 times 24, something that you guys have done a million times before, um, and we use a strategy called the area model, or array model, or we've also talked about it as thinking inside the box. So if we look at it, um, if we were to solve 15 times 24 using the area model, it would look something like this. We would say, well, um, you know, solving just like area where you do length times width, the uh, length here is going to be um, 15. So 15 is made up of a 10 and a 5, so we're separating it by place value. And then the 24 on this side is made up of a 20 and a 4. And then we just multiply each of these sections of this rectangle, so 10 and 20 is 200. 20 and 5 is going to be, and we, do, we know how to do this really fast, 5 times 2 is 10, and then since we're multiplying in the tens place, with one of the factors, there's going to be another zero there. It's just 100. 10 times 4 is going to be 40. And 5 times 4 is going to be 20. So then we have each of these sections. The area of this section is 40. The area of this section is 200. And we add up all of these sections together, we'll get the total value of this rectangle, which is a representation of 15 times 24. So we just take those parts, 200 times 1, or excuse me, plus the 100, plus the 40. Sorry about my handwriting. It's pretty messy when I'm using this. Um, and we add those all up, and we're going to have here 360. So 15 times 24 is 360 because we took we broke this up, the 15 and the 10 and the 5. We broke up the 20 and the, a 20 and a 4. We multiplied the parts and then put those parts together to get a total of 360. That's something you're very familiar with. Well, we're going to use that strategy to um, find the product of multiplying two mixed numbers. So um, it's not really any different. We're still going to break these up with, uh, with place value. So instead of breaking up tens place and the ones place, um, we're going to break up the ones place, the holes one place, with the fractions of a place, right? With the parts. So we're going to take three and one fourth, and we're going to look at the th put the three here. So you're going to put the whole number in one of the sections, and then the fraction in the other section. So we have three here, one fourth here. Then we're going to take two thirds, and again we're going to look at those in its own parts. So the whole number here, and then the fraction here. So down here in this section is going to be the two thirds. Okay. So you can see the similarities. Here, took up the 15, made it 10 and 5 by breaking up by place value. Um, same thing here, we're taking the 3 and 1 fourth, but we're saying let's break up the whole uh, number on one part and the uh, fractions on the other part. So now you're going to multiply these each the length and the width for each of these parts. So 3 times 2, no sweat, equals 6. 1 fourth times 2. Now this is something that you guys have done quite a bit of. Um, so, uh, one way that we've done it is uh, by knowing that 2 is the same as 2 over 1, so 2 times 1 is going to be 2, right? And then the 1, and I can imagine there's a 1 under here, right? 1 times 4 is going to be 4, so 2 fourths, which I know is also 1 half, but I'll leave it at 2 fourths for now. Um, then we're going to multiply this whole number, the 3, times the 2 thirds. So same thing, 3 is the same thing as 3 over 1. And if I want to do that, if that helps me to visualize that better, I can do that. So 3 times 2 is going to be 6. 1 times 3 
is going to be 3, and I go, wait a minute, 6 thirds, and I know that fraction is another, is another way to look at it, is this division, right? 6 divided by 3 is going to give me 2, right? And then we're going to, so now we only have one section left here to do 1 fourth times 2 thirds, and so um, after looking at uh, visual models of multiplying fractions, we know we have proven that we can multiply across numerator times a numerator. 2 times 1 is going to give us 2. And 3 times 4 is going to give us 12. Um, so I'm going to look at all of these. And now, just like back here when I did all of these parts, then I took all the parts and I added them all together to get my total area, right? We're going to do the same thing here. So, I'm going to take this 6, and I'm going to add it with, I know oh, this is going to be easier if I just add the, the whole numbers here first, so 6 and 2, and, um, and I'm even going to do that first. So I know I've got 8 here, I've got 8 so far, right? Then I'm going to do these parts, so I've got 2 fourths and 2 twelfths. Now, I know that um, we can't just add fractions um, across when they have different denominators. They're different sizes. So I'm going to have to make them into uh, change the denominators to be like denominators. Well, when I look at these, um, I can tell I know that 4 goes into 12. So I'm going to leave this 2 twelfths the same. And I'm going to change this 2 fourths to a 12th. I know that 4 times 3 is going to give me 12. So I have to do the same thing on the top. 2 times 3 is going to be 6. So then we've got 6 twelfths. I'm going to add it to 2 twelfths. Whoops. And that's going to give me what, guys? 8 twelfths. So now I know I've got all together, I've got 8 and 8 twelfths. And since these are both even numbers, I know that 2 can go into both of them. So I'm going to do that right away. Divide both of them by 2. Because I want to reduce this. I want to make this as simple as possible. I want to simplify. So that's going to give me 4, 6, and again, hey, wait a minute. They're both even numbers. I can divide both of them by 2 again. And I can get 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So the total answer here, I'm just going to do a, whoops, a line under here. It's going to give me 8. And remember, 4 divided by 2 is 2. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So 8 and 2 thirds is my answer. So 3 and 1 fourth times 2 and 2 thirds is going to give me 8 and 2 thirds. And that is reasonable because I have more than 3 here and I have more than 2. And so if I had just 3 times 2, that'd be 6. Since this is greater than 3, this is greater than 2, um, that seems like a reasonable answer. It's going to be less than 9, because this isn't quite 3, right? 3 times 3 is 9. But it's going to be more than 6, so that's a reasonable answer. All right. Um, I hope that helps to use that strategy on multiplying mixed numbers with mixed numbers.